Professor Cobb, I'd like to begin before you are a professor, maybe even before you think you're going to be a professor in your childhood. Where are you? What is your family like? Uh, I was born uh, uh, in India in a town uh, called Ichalkaranji. Uh, it's in uh, uh, southern, uh, southern and western uh, part of India, about uh, let's say 10 hours drive uh, south uh, from Bombay. Uh, Is it in the Bombay cultural spheres? Yeah, so it's in the state of Maharashtra, uh, whose capital is uh, the city of Bombay. Uh, so it's ha exactly halfway through Bombay and another city which people might know, Bangalore. Yes, of course, yeah. uh, in computer science. Yeah, especially in CS. Uh, yeah, so I was born uh, there. Uh, uh, to a scientific family? So everybody in my family uh, is a doctor. Uh, so my parents, uh, right, my mother is a doctor, my father was a doctor, uh, my brother is now a doctor. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, somehow uh, the expectation was that I would end up uh, being a doctor. Uh, and I didn't have any uh, <clears throat> uh, specific inclination uh, towards any particular scientific topic. Uh, certainly not uh, when I was in like third grade or fourth grade, but well, it slowly, slowly happened. Uh, yeah. Let's let's begin with the ten-year-old. Let's just arbitrarily say you're ten now. Are you stealing uh, to your parents' library and looking at scientific books? Are you indifferent to that? Are you mostly interested in football? I mean, what what sort of child are you? Uh, so, uh, so I wasn't uh, heavily into sports or any specific extracurricular activities. Uh, I mean, I was I was good uh, in studies, uh, but of course I, I did play a lot, uh, but nothing uh, which can be called organized or systematic uh, sports. Right. Uh, yeah, I, but in fact, I I played a lot. Uh, I was probably the most active kid uh, in my class. Uh, uh, but I was also good at studies uh, and when I was in the fourth grade and the fifth grade mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, so in the uh, in our uh, the state uh, uh, we have uh, uh, mathematics exams uh, at regular intervals uh, so, so in, the, yeah. in the in the high school uh, so so I was already uh, uh, doing well in these mathematical exams, mm -hmm. uh, one in the fourth grade and one in the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one which is in fifth grade and there is also version in the eighth grade, uh, these are called Ganit Pradnya exams. Uh, so this translates to, uh, I guess, mathematics talent exams. Mm -hmm. And these are actually quite advanced uh, for those levels. Uh, they are comparable to, for example, the International Mathematical Olympiads, which are well known. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, in terms of their uh, quality and the difficulty. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So because of these exams, uh, uh, and since I was doing well, uh, I mean, it was clear that uh, I was good at math. Uh, Is this a state school? Is it a private school that you're in? The the school itself it's a it's a it's a pu public school or uh, the the, st the state funded school. Uh huh. And um, clearly, it seems like the state has um, a theory of searching for talent mm -hmm. and then sending young people according to the roots that the talent indicates. So you're being tested. They're examining you and others. You are turning out to be not without a certain ability in mathematics. Does that mean your fate becomes foreordained in terms of the schooling system? Uh, no, not really. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a. At least in those days, it was a bit strange situation in the sense that, uh, as I said, we had these uh, exams uh, which included math, but there were also uh, exams which included languages uh, yeah, and okay. other things. Uh, and uh, this was until eighth grade. Uh, and perhaps even 10th grade uh, but uh, and up to those levels uh, uh, I would say I was very well prepared uh, but somehow 
beyond that it was in some sense complete darkness uh, uh, so for example i mean nobody uh, in my town uh, which is a large town mm. uh, with a couple of hundred thousand people mm. uh, and uh, certainly in that time uh, nobody knew anything about higher mathematics or uh, the actual research uh, done in universities really yeah uh, yeah this is the 90s? Uh, this was early 90s. Early 90s. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, but uh, somehow by uh, rather actually miraculous uh, circumstances, uh, somehow I was introduced to the right people, uh, uh, I was given access to uh, the right set of books. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, my mother and uh, my high school uh, principal, uh, Mr. Gokte. Uh, so these two were really instrumental in uh, guiding me uh, uh, in the sense that right, they would go and actually find out uh, uh, what's, what, what's there uh, after you are done with the, let's say, the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would find books. Uh, uh, so uh, Mr. Gokte, he introduced me to uh, uh, professor uh, 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 with the name of Katre, uh, he's uh, he's a professor in the math department uh, in Pune University. So Pune is a, another large city, uh, not far from Bombay, mm -hmm. uh, and that was, I think, uh, a very actually uh, big somehow coincidence that I managed to meet him, uh, and he knew about uh, these international mathematical Olympiads, uh, which students participate in when they are in 11th and 12th grade. Uh, Maybe it's because I'm American that I ask the following question. Uh, I want the child's reaction to all of this. Do you feel pressured? Do you feel that you are following the advice of your elders and so you will do what they say? What is your internal discussion about this? this no, I, 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 I never felt pressured at all. Uh, there was no pressure whatsoever. Uh, uh, it was more like uh, uh, yes, I mean, you seem to be good at it and uh, these are the resources we can make available to you and, and then it's up to you. Uh, uh, yeah, and it, yeah, and it, yeah, and I, I, it turned out uh, I was interested and apparently good at these things. Uh, yeah, there was no pressure whatsoever. Why, did you have other siblings or were you an only child? Uh, I have a brother. Uh, and was he on any of the same... Uh, roots, intellectual roots at the same time? Yeah, yeah we went uh, through roughly the same uh, process. Uh, but at some point he, uh, he decided uh, to take medicine. Uh, so he's a doctor, a gastroenterologist. That's right, uh, family tradition. Yeah. To, yeah to so uh, you are the, the wild rebel. You, you don't become a doctor, but uh, uh, clearly you go to university. Is, that's where you begin to get guidance in in what we would call higher mathematics? Uh, yeah, so for my introduction to higher mathematics uh, was uh, primarily through uh, these international mathematical olympiads. These are, I suppose, uh, well known to people. Uh, uh, yeah, and then, so, so India actually has a very serious uh, uh, training program. Uh, for uh, high school students. Uh, high school meaning in India it's called 11th and 12th grade. Okay. Uh, so th th there are serious programs uh, to train students uh, to participate in the math olympiads. Uh, but for me the issue was I was in this town which was uh, somehow a remote town and I just didn't know anything that even these exams exist. And mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but as I said, uh, through Mr. Gokte and Mr. Katre, uh, I somehow managed to find out about these uh, and uh, yeah, then I, uh, I, I, uh, I had the books, all the books to prepare uh, and then there was an issue in the sense that there was nobody to actually guide as such. Uh, so I had to, I had to prepare uh, uh, myself uh, reading all these books. I uh, also spent a short amount of time, maybe a week or so, in a math institute in Pune called Bhaskarachara Pratishthan. Uh, that was very nice. Uh, uh, Would you describe yourself as having caught the passion for mathematics or was it just a sort of progression of curiosity, um, still uncertain about where it would lead? 
yeah, it's all combined together, right? I mean, there is also passion. Uh, you realize that you are doing well. Uh, you see all these books and they're fascinating. Uh, and actually, it wasn't just mathematics. Uh, mathematics, I was always doing. Uh, but uh, uh, there were times I was also very fascinated with chemistry and physics. Uh, 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 and one of the things I remember about chemistry and physics uh, is, uh, so somehow we had these uh, 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 amazing Russian books uh, which were translated into the local language which is called Marathi uh, the, and uh, yeah those were really amazing uh, and I was, yeah, I was quite fascinated with both chemistry and physics as well. Uh, yeah, but somehow uh, I slowly uh, right, got um, uh, dragged, well not quite dragged, but right. Uh, well, 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 does the system at some point force you to make decisions? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so in India the, the system is very rigid. Uh, uh, so what you have to do is uh, at the end of the 12th grade, uh, you simply have to decide, uh, I want to be a doctor or I want to be an engineer or I want to pursue pure sciences. Mm. So you simply have to decide at the end of 12th grade, uh, which is clearly I mean, really very early. Uh, and even in 12th grade, I wasn't completely sure that I necessarily wanted to do uh, right uh, uh, sciences and not medicine. Uh, right, but you had to choose. Yeah, so I had to choose. Uh, and I, I was also admitted to the uh, Indian Institute of Technology. Uh, uh, which are the premier engineering institutes uh, in India. Uh, uh, but even then I had to choose, uh, 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 right, uh, as computer science or uh, say mathematics. Uh, and I chose computer science, uh, which actually in hindsight was very uh, in inform, uninformed decision, uh, mm -hmm. but, but the right one, uh, it seems. Uh, uh, because I had never even seen a computer uh, before I entered the institution. Uh, yeah, yeah, so b before my first year in college, I had never even seen a computer. Uh, but somehow I was told by some friends that, uh, I mean the friends that I met in the, uh, in the Math Olympiad program, uh, and these were friends from other big cities who knew who had much better idea of uh, how things work. Uh, yeah, so I was told that uh, there are aspects of computer science which are effectively uh, same as mathematics and you could do that. Uh, yeah, so I more or less took that, took that advice on faith uh, and it, it turned out that uh, there are aspects of computer science which are very, very mathematical. Uh, and yeah, and that's what be, that's what I do now. And this will be, yes, as I was yeah. saying, very important to your career. This yeah. this not making rigid distinction between computer science and mathematics. Yes. And uh, when we take you along in your career, I'd like to talk more about those distinctions, mm -hmm. if if they exist. But what's interesting is, unlike many of the people I've interviewed in this series, um, <clears throat> you're coming into the world of the mind at a point where computer science is even considered a field. Uh, people just one generation above you uh, are stumbling into the world that they later will contribute to tremendously, but the words computer science are virtually not even there. Uh, but for you already, there's an established world out there that you can enter into. Mm -hmm. uh, you can specialize in computer science, having discovered the joy of the computer. Um, what did you think that, again, the computer field was going to lead you? Did you, again, have any expectations, or was it just one problem by another as you developed your intellectual curiosity? Uh, uh, Maybe you just stumbled. So, no, the computer science, as I already said, I more or less stumbled uh, onto the subject. Right. Uh, I was really a math person uh, in terms of interests and training uh, up to that point. Uh, and then since I chose the computer science as my major, uh, I mean, I, of course, I had, I had to do uh, all the coursework and I had to know about uh, operating systems and programming languages, right? Uh, right? Uh, 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 yeah, but uh, then as you uh, right, uh, become a third year or a fourth year student in college, uh, you have to choose specific uh, yes. uh, 
I don't know what's uh, right? these semester long or year long projects. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, and then at the end of the college, you also need to. Uh, uh, well, it was a standard practice then uh, that you would apply to uh, the U.S. universities uh, for a PhD program. Uh, right. So and then you would have to uh, say what you are interested in. Uh, yeah. So let's let's say this point because the computer science field, mathematical applied mathematics has developed so fast mm -hmm. in your career in, in, in that I wonder about what, as you look back, was known and not known at this point. I mean, you mm -hmm. are uh, finishing a computer uh, course uh, at a distinguished Indian university. You're about to go to the United States. Um, broadly, as you look back, what, what is known at this point? Where, where are what is your sense of the field? Uh, uh, Does it seem very You mean at that point? Uh, yes, uh, at that point. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so somehow uh, I have always felt uh, that uh, uh, I'm kind of uh, wandering in darkness and I, once in a while I just stumble onto things. Uh, okay. So for example, when I was, uh, uh, I, I applied to the PhD programs in United States and I was admitted to the uh, the topmost PhD programs uh, in computer science and in particular the theoretical computer science which is really the study of mathematical aspects of computer science okay. uh, but I knew very little about uh, what uh, uh, the actual research that goes on in these universities uh, I had very little access to even internet uh, and in fact the internet was so slow that all I wanted to do was to go to web pages of the uh, professor at these universities mm -hmm. and see what they were doing. Yes. And it was too slow. I just yeah. I, I couldn't even really figure out uh, what the topics of research are. Uh, I had a couple of phone conversations with the faculty members at these universities. I mean, who were uh, trying to attract me yeah. to their university, uh, and I was really. Uh, What's the word? Uh, uh, odd, or uh, I was felt nervous even to talking to these people because I knew nothing. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I, had, I had to make a choice, uh, so I, I chose uh, the Princeton uh, University uh, for PhD. Uh, well, I guess mainly because I knew a student uh, who was a couple of years my senior uh, from uh, from IIT Bombay uh, and. Uh, yeah. So, uh, had you done a, a, a thesis in uh, yes, graduate? Yes. 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 I had done uh, one semester-long thesis and one another year-long thesis. And what did, uh, was the direction of the thesis? Uh, yeah. I mean, these were uh, some specific topics in theoretical computer science, which uh, I mean, I don't, I don't do this anymore. Uh, uh, well, somebody is sensing that you have a future in this field. Or you would not have wound up in the uh, in one of the great universities for it. But there you go again. I'm going to use the word stumble, although I don't I don't think it's probably exactly the right word. Uh, you're you're following your instincts, sure. and uh, you are now at Princeton. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what is the guidance that you are now getting now that you are mm -hmm. in a place with good internet, mm -hmm. <laughs> with sophisticated computer technology? Mm -hmm. um, what guidance are you getting in terms of your direction? No, no, once I was in Princeton, uh, right, everything was just uh, uh, clear in some sense that, uh, I mean, I said, that's, immediately I had access to uh, the best resources, the best researchers, right? Uh, so after that, it was just a matter of, uh, uh, in some sense, me doing my job as a PhD student, which is to uh, read research papers, attend uh, research talks, uh, select research problems and work on them and solve them. Uh, yeah, so once I was in Princeton, yeah, I would say the things were much clearer and easier. Uh, though of course, I mean, there are some issue of, right, I mean, you end up in a completely new place, so one needs to adjust in terms of uh, just the living or the life right, or culture, the, yeah, yeah, cultural yeah. things. Uh, yeah, but academically, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, once I was in Princeton, it was, Easy, I suppose. Uh, 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 yeah, so I had uh, wonderful advisor Sanjeev Arora in Princeton. There is Institute for Advanced Studies uh, with the group of uh, Avi Victorson in computer science. Uh, 
Uh, so there were plenty of talks. Uh, uh, I could go to any conferences uh, that I would want to. So I went to conferences. Uh, uh, right. Uh, it's it's the early twenty first century, presumably when you're now at Princeton. Uh, Ninety nine. Yeah. Ninety nine, just yes. at the border. Yeah. Um, and again, I might ask uh, if if it interests you. Again, the state of the field of applied uh, mathematics as applied to computer at this point. I mean, are we? Are there buzzwords of the time? Is artificial intelligence circulating as one of the frameworks for inquiry? What what is the again the direction uh, because things change so fast in your field? Uh, yeah, so yeah, maybe one needs to make a distinction between uh, what is theoretical and what is applied, okay, and please. it's a very uh, very subjective term. Uh, for example, uh, pure mathematicians may call theoretical computer science as applied mathematics, right? Whereas I'm a theoretical computer scientist, and I would call other parts of computer science as applied, which is artificial intelligence, graphics, operating systems, right? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, now, for me personally, uh, yeah, I consider myself uh, a theory person, uh, right? Theoretical person, so theoretical computer scientist and mathematician. Uh, so I actually. Uh, I mean, I have taken uh, courses, uh, right, in all the applied side of computer science. Uh, I'm in a computer science department, and right, uh, and I interact with colleagues and attend talks. So I have some view of uh, computer science out outside of uh, theoretical computer science. Uh, yeah, but I wouldn't. I don't uh, think myself as competent enough to uh, make any comments on the direction or a big picture, right? right. I'm really a theory person. Uh, right. uh, so I, I, I prove theorems. I sit in my office, I uh, write uh, theorems on the board, uh, right? And I stare at the ceiling or the sky okay. and think. Uh, and sometimes wander in Washington Square. Sometimes so wander in Washington Square Park. When yeah. I was a grad student in Princeton at the Institute for Advanced Studies, that was actually, in fact, when I came to Princeton uh, on my first day, it was amazing. It was like the most beautiful place I had ever seen. Uh, in fact, after that, uh, the Harry Potter movies came, right? And they have this Hogwarts uh, school of uh, wizardry. Uh, yeah, so in hindsight, the, my experience of Princeton was this entering Hogwarts. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the, all the graduate income, incoming grad students, they are placed in this dormitory called Graduate College. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. if you have seen this. That, that exactly has the feel of Hogwarts. Uh, and they have this amazing dining hall, uh, which is quite similar to what you would see in Harry Potter. Uh, yeah. And actually, most college architecture in the Ivy League was a fantasy of English style, so you were exactly right Probably. Uh, in, in their aspiration. So you have a great mentor, I think, at Princeton. Who was that, and what was his field? Uh, Sanjeev Arora, uh, yeah. he's, uh, he, yeah, he's a professor in Princeton Computer Science Department. Uh, uh, so he, uh, uh, so in fact, the area of, very specific area of research that I work uh, on uh, is called uh, probabilistically checkable proofs, uh, and also it's called hardness of approximation right. for NP-complete problems. Uh, so he was one of the uh, early founders uh, of this research area. Uh, uh, another mentor in Princeton was Avi Victorson. He's uh, he's at the Institute for Advanced Studies. Uh, I mean, though I I haven't really worked directly with Avi on anything specific. Uh, I mean, he's just this father figure, uh, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, inspiring figure. Uh, another mentor, uh, I mean, is Johan Hastad. He's uh, uh, he's in Stockholm, uh, uh, but he was visiting uh, Princeton for a year uh, when I was a graduate student. Uh, so yeah, so that that was another. Uh, very good uh, mentorship experience uh, I had. I, I want to uh, dwell, it's obviously important in your career, <clears throat> on this whole question of approximation. And I, I want to say it as a layman to make sure what I understand and what I don't understand. Uh, it boils down to the, the sense of what a computer can actually achieve, compute, if I'm right. That while we know that computers certainly can be tested, can be used for verification. It's a question of what they can solve and not solve. Is that, is that the core of this 
this issue? Uh, yeah, yeah, more, yeah, more or less. I mean, you're, uh, yeah, you're right uh, in the broader sense. Uh, so more specifically, uh, uh, computational complexity, that's the name of the subfield. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a subfield of theoretical computer science. Right. And uh, the, 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 the subject here is, uh, I mean, we know that there are many, many computational problems uh, that we want to solve. Uh, right. And when I say we want to solve, I mean we want to solve fast, right? right? Uh, yeah, and then the question is uh, classification of these problems according to what their inherent difficulty is, uh, right? And it turns out some problems uh, you can solve them fast, uh, some problems cannot be solved fast, uh, and, and in fact, uh, uh, in some cases even that is a good news, that some, there are problems which cannot be solved fast. Uh, so, for example, right? Uh, I'm sure you would be happy uh, to know that uh, uh, people cannot break into crypto systems, right. right? And that that actually, right? So it's a it's it's an example of a computational problem which cannot be solved fast, right? Breaking into com computer system or your banking accounts, right? right? So one should be thankful that uh, there are problems which cannot be solved fast. Uh, yeah. So computational complexity is the study of uh, uh, classification of problems according to their inherent hardness or difficulty uh, and then uh, it then it takes many many different forms uh, uh, so one specific uh, topic uh, which is my uh, area of research is uh, turns out there are many many computational problems uh, these are known as NP complete or NP hard problems uh, the most Perhaps well-known example is the traveling salesperson problem, where you are given a large number of cities, all pairwise distances between the cities, and your goal is to start at one city, let's say New York, and uh, visit all the cities, come back to New York, while minimizing the total distance that you travel. Okay, so it's a, it's a computational problem, which is evidently or self-evidently uh, we would like to solve fast. Uh, but turns out uh, nobody knows uh, how to solve this problem fast. And uh, computer scientists very strongly believe that uh, there is no fast algorithm for this. So uh, it is inherently unsolvable. So it's inherently unsolvable. Uh, or this is what computer scientists very, very strongly believe. Right. Okay. Uh, now, once uh, you accept this, mm -hmm. essentially uh, fact of life, uh, you can ask the next question that, okay, maybe uh, I cannot find the tour uh, of the minimum length, yes. but maybe I can find a tour of length which is close to the minimum, right? Yes. Which might be good enough in practice. This is uh, an approximation. So this is notion of an approximation, right? Right. Uh, yeah, and then uh, if I had to say in one sentence what I do for my research is I classify uh, NP-complete problems into categories as to which ones we can find good approximate solutions and which ones we cannot. Right. Um, maybe this is romantic of me to ask, but was there a eureka moment uh, after you developed this background at Princeton and so forth with this great mentor, where you began to see the direction that your work would go in approximation? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, yes and no, in the sense that uh, uh, so so this particular field of uh, uh, approximations uh, uh, is uh, uh, it was already a well established field of research uh, when I uh, entered graduate studies. Uh, so in particular, uh, uh, my, 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 right, Sanjeev Arora and Johan Hastad and 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 several others. Uh, they already had uh, foundational results uh, on this topic uh, throughout the 90s. Yes. Uh, uh, right. So, so there was definitely uh, a direction. Uh, though I would say that when I started my graduate studies, uh, this direction seemed uh, a bit stuck. Uh, right. And uh, right. Uh, meaning, right. There were many, many very difficult questions to be answered, yes. right, but we were seemingly stuck. Uh, Would you have said that at the time? Yeah, I, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, so well, I started, I started in 99, so it took me at least two years to just 
survey or read about right. everything that was known and once I was at least an expert in the sense that I knew what was already done. Right. Uh, yeah, then it was kind of clear that uh, this this project was stuck. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then since then, uh, so since early 2000, so for about 20 years now, uh, uh, we, we have been making, uh, I, I would say, I would say significant progress. And uh, we are in process of uh, getting out of this uh, stuck situation. This is, uh, of course, a collective process. I understand that, but the you of the we. Um, <clears throat> what did you set upon to articulate to help unstick unstick the field? Uh, yeah. So one of the specific things, uh, I mean, I personally yes. did was uh, to propose a conjecture called Unique Games conjecture. Uh, yes. It simply amounts to saying that there is a very specific concrete problem. Uh, well, not, not quite same as traveling salesman problem, but something similar. And uh, I conjectured that this problem is uh, very hard to uh, solve and even very hard to approximate. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then this is one of the key uh, uh, key uh, 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 issues in theoretical computer science, uh, which problems are hard and which problems are not, or which problems are easy, right? And uh, and even proposing that a certain problem is hard is, at least in hindsight, is a contribution in itself. I see. Uh, uh, right? Uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, we still don't know for sure whether this unique games problem, whether it's hard or not, uh, though uh, we do have very significant progress, me and my co-authors, in the last three years or so, uh, indicating that, yes, uh, it's indeed the case that uh, this problem is very likely to be hard. Uh, and nevertheless, uh, 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 well, uh, and if you do believe that this problem is hard, it turns out uh, by a process called reduction, yes. you can show that many, many other problems are also hard. Uh, which we, did, we we had no clue about their status. Uh, yeah, so conditional on this problem being hard, uh, we have made a, lots of progress. Uh, the progress is in knowing what you cannot know or do? Yeah, the progress is in knowing that there are several problems that we are interested in and they are hard as well. In knowing that several problems are hard. Once, once you know that a problem is hard, and of course mm -hmm. we're simplifying a very complex process, once you, once you know that, is that when you set upon the approximation inquiry? Uh, no, when I said hard, uh, I already meant they are hard to even approximate. Even to we, approximate. Already, we already know that all these problems are already hard to find the exact solutions. Right, and what I have been doing, or what this area is doing, is try to show that these problems remain hard even to approximate. Ah, I see. Yes. Okay, that's important. Okay. Um, and and there could be even something beyond that. Uh, once you realize that these problems are hard to approx even hard to approximate, you can ask further questions. Uh, are they hard uh, uh, even on instances that actually arise in practice, or they just happen to be hard on instances? They, that might not even arise in practice. So there are many, many questions of more refined nature. Uh, yeah. And um, it's odd to put these words, and you can tell me not to. Uh, is this an optimistic expectation of future inquiry, or is this an acknowledgement that there are some doors that stay closed? I mean. I, so generally, I don't like the words optimistic yes, versus pessimistic. Uh, it, just, it, it, is what, it, is. it is what it is. Uh, it is right? It is. Uh, you're you're trying to uh, uh, discover uh, or establish what is reality, right? And yeah, if there are hard problems, then yes, there are hard problems. Right. And as already, as already said, even having a hard problem has its own advantages. Right. Uh, if there were no hard problems, then you are not never going to have any cryptography. You will never have secure bank accounts. Uh, nothing is going to be secure. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, and even if there are hard problems, 
you can try to find ways around it, right? Right. Uh, so, for example, you can try to design what are known as heuristics. These are algorithms right. which which are not guaranteed. They do not come up with hundred percent guarantee that they will work, but sometimes they work. Uh, uh, maybe they work well enough in practice, right? So, right. So there are ways of dealing with uh, even hard problems. As we come toward uh, the end of this, I want to ask about the role, again, perhaps too much of a generalization of collaboration. When you came closer to your insights, um, were there other people working at that point in that breakthrough inquiry as well? Or do you have colleagues who are doing work similar to what you're doing right now? Oh yeah, certainly. I mean, so this is really, uh, uh, so, so this particular topic of research that yes. I have been describing, it's a, it's a massive uh, collaborative effort. Well, massive, right? What is massive and what is not yeah. massive? Again, that is a relative term. Uh, but at least in the computer context of com computer science, which is a very young field, yes, uh, this does qualify as a fairly large project, uh, which started in early 90s and uh, it has now going on for 30 years, with uh, uh, many many prominent researchers making contributions. Uh, 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 and for me, one of the actually nicest uh, developments is uh, my advisor, Sanjeev Arora. He was uh, one of the founding founders of this field. Right. Uh, and uh, well, I guess I, I, I have been working on this for about 20 years now. And uh, in the last three years, as I alluded to or mentioned before, uh, we did make a significant progress, uh, me and my co-authors. We did make a significant progress uh, on arguably the cent most central question in, on this topic, the unique games conjecture. Uh, and uh, this is again a collaborative effort. Uh, I have uh, co-authors, uh, Muli Safra, Guy Kindler, Irith Dinur from Israel, uh, and, uh, and kind, of, kind of remarkably a student, uh, Dor Minzer. Uh, he's a student at Tel Aviv University, uh, so he's formally not my student, but I guess effectively or for all practical purposes, uh, uh, he's my student. And for me, it's, it's super nice that uh, my advisor started something, I continued for many, many years, and now my student, Dor, uh, he's now at the forefront of it. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a nice experience. And, uh, <laughs> this is the point where you have the expectation in a, in a still young life of a lot of work in this field and a lot more uh, development. Do you see, and perhaps it's unnecessary to say, already uh, a direction, the next step, the next phase of inquiry uh, that you will address? Uh, well, there are certainly directions, uh, right? Uh, there are always directions. Uh, and uh, the important thing is to have a direction with very difficult goal at the end of it and uh, irrespective of any in some sense uh, bias of optimism or pessimism yeah. just keep working uh, towards it and see right let's see what happens thank you